Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's adventure we're going to dive into the history of Port Elizabeth, back to a time when the whole world was on the brink of another war. Our adventure starts way back in the 1990s when my family and I used to travel this road on the way to Schoenmarkers Corp for a day out. I made sure never to miss the ominous looking building on the side of the hill, built with these weird curves and edges, as if the architect forgot his ruler at home that day. I would come to learn later that the shape of the building was no accident, purposefully breaking up its own square shape in order to better blend in with its environment. And it was only much later that I realized that this is not the only building of its type in Port Elizabeth, but rather forming part of a wider network of British defenses at the outbreak of World War II. This building at Schoenmakerskop is formally referred to as a fortress observation post, as seen in the old literature and maps. And even though there are some minor provisions for weapons use at this location, this building was mainly used as a lookout point to spot enemy vessels approaching the bay from the west. Joining me on today's adventure is Field Marshal Goose and Private Rollo reporting for duty. Hey. With Rollo quickly <coughs> realizing that the concrete ramp is not as easy as it seems to climb. <laughs> To the left of this ramp, there's a set of stairs that's a little overgrown. Scattered across the hillside, there are a few of these risers that used to have steel lids. So, along with the construction of this fort, was a staircase that runs all the way up the side of the hill, with a smooth concrete ramp that's built right beside it. Now if you look closely at this ramp, you can see grooves that have been worn into the concrete. Which tells us that there was a trolley of some sorts that used to run up and down this ramp. With the big fortification at the top, when they needed to move heavy material and equipment up the side of the hill, they had a winch at the top and they would hoist this trolley all along the smooth ramp, which would eventually over time wear the concrete away leaving these grooves behind. Okay, go. Yo. Bulky. The goose spots a bird of prey. Kuro, kuro, kuro. <laughs> wow, such a beautiful <laughs> So the staircase leading up to Schoenmakerskop Fort consists of 70 individual steps. You gotta be half fit if you wanna attempt this climb. This ridge was the obvious choice for the location of the observation fort, with 180 degree visibility and perfect elevation over an otherwise flat coastal terrain. This isolated ridge is so perfect for the application, you could almost imagine that it was man-made specifically for this task. In present day, the fort just keeps a watchful eye over the residents of Schoenmakerskop. The planning for this building was concluded towards the end of 1939 as the war was rolling in, and construction was started in early 1940. The building has three levels. The ground floor has got two rooms. The one which we are in now has two windows and a door, all of which was originally made of thick steel. And strangely enough, the two rooms on the ground level are not connected to each other on the inside. You have to go completely out of the building to get from the one to the other. Hey Goose! The doors and the windows have rusted away over time, leaving the door and the window frames still in place. The Goose is hunting a geocache. Hello! The main building construction is the solid concrete, but the second room on the ground floor, the brickwork, is visible. Check her hearing now. Is this the Yes. Yeah. This is the Lerbas. This is the Lerbas. Check it out. What was it that you had made four? No, no. Obviously, in the later years, it had made four. But you can see it in the mirror. Wow. Okay, I can see it. That was black for the Ler. The Ler is just from under and under. Perhaps this was done for strategic reasons, but the only way to get to the roof was through this second ground floor room, where the ladder was located once upon a time. 
You can also see the wooden door frames instead of the steel ones in the room next door. Ooh. Moving up a level we get onto the solid concrete deck and walkway before entering what I believe to be the main observation area. The goose has found an interesting drawing. <laughs> like a cave painting that was ordered off of Wish, paying homage to their fertility gods. There's an access point through the floor to the ground level from this main observation room, which means at least you could move between these two rooms in case of a lockdown. The roof is supported by two large I-beams either side, which have definitely seen better days. And on the bottom edge you can see the remains of some large steel hinges for shutters that fold down and outwards when you want to use the observation area and can be flipped back up and close off the entire window in the event of an attack. The other main feature in this room are these three cement pedestals and after a bit of research I found that they were used to mount the depression range finder, a device that was used in these observation posts to determine the exact position of enemy vessels on the water. The map for Schoenmakers Kop would have looked something like this. Looking at this footage now you may think that this building isn't too camouflaged and it's actually quite easy to see. But you've got to remember that back in the day they used to plant trees all around the area. And spotting this shape hundreds of meters away would have been a tall order back in 1940. Once the building was erected the perimeter was lined with barbed wire fence and palisading and a rifleman's position was set up near the site. Give it a go. I'll give it a go. The goose managed to find herself a little treasure while hunting for the geocache. Nice. Yes. So get thanks a link. Finally, I get to the top level of the fort. The goose has decided to stay with Rolo on the dune, leaving me to catch the last bit of footage by myself. Within the protective walls of the roof level, we have these gun holes, very typical of a defensive position, with the wide taper tapering to a narrow slit. And then we have the other side of the ladder chute, looking down on that extra room on the ground level. The ladder has long since been removed, so getting onto this roof was no easy feat. Notice how the wall becomes skinnier over the unsupported section of the roof. The rear facing wall has been covered with a scale pattern which adds to the camouflage, but it begs the question why only have it on the rear side of the building? If I was a betting man I would say that the entire building was once covered with this, but the concrete finish on the main structure didn't have as good adhesion as the brick surface at the back and the scales have fallen off over time. As I look down I notice a cheeky goose taking a walk around the building, so I decide to follow suit and see what she's up to. Over here you can clearly see the difference between the concrete and the scaled finish, as well as those thick steel window frames I spoke of earlier, strong enough to withstand a small army. Notice the fact that the bottom level has no front facing windows, with that heavy thick concrete roof only supported by those two rusty I-beams. On the way back down the hill, Rollo gives me a fantastic idea. It's a quick way down. <laughs> oh, it works. But do you think the soldiers of the day considered that to be an option? <laughs> if you need to get down quickly, you just get on the ramp and slide your ass down. As we're about to leave, I noticed some foundations to the right at the foot of the hill. Could these have been the support buildings for this fort? Could there have been a radio room, barracks, recreational area, kitchen, ablutions, all safely tucked away behind the ridge, out of view? Some of the forts in this series really did have documented support buildings tucked away nearby. 
Try as I may, I couldn't find any supporting documentation about these foundations at Schoenmakerskop, but it just makes sense with their proximity to the main fort. That said, if any viewers can shed light on this mystery, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to include it in the future video. As I was walking through these ruins, I came across this neatly dug hole, which is evidence that metal detectorists have been in the area recently. After tying up with the general, Uncle Lucas, he showed me some interesting artifacts that they've uncovered in this area. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It's part of a series called The Forts of Port Elizabeth. So if you want to see more of that, then keep watching until the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe so we can notify you when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.